guys, it's Jay and Sarah from One Dream Farm, and today we got our kids, Noah and Zoe, with us. They're distracting the goats so they don't bother us while we're doing this video, as you can see. Um, this is our first video since Hurricane Zeta. Wasn't that what it was called? I guess. I think that's what her name was. Um, we did have some damage. Uh, it took out our girl goat barn and basically our boy shelter i guess um had a few pins that had the roofs blew off of them we lost power for over 24 hours over 24 hours um it was a rough time but you know we're here we're rebuilding um we made it through the storm most of our animals are great. All right, guys, we've had a um, several people ask about our goats. We do raise ADGA registered Nigerian dwarf goats. They are the smallest of the dairy breeds, so they're really good for milk. Um, they have a high butter fat in their milk. We really enjoy them. As you can see, uh, we're currently sitting in a goat pen. We actually have three um, different enclosures for our goats. Uh, we have a billy pen uh, for our bucks, a nanny pen for all of our does and uh, doelings, and um, we are currently sitting in our breeding pen, which as you can see behind us, we have a few of our goats in here for breeding. Uh, we have one of our billies, and I think three nannies in here right now. Mm -hmm. uh, they will be in here for a month. Um, goats, uh, female goats. The Nigerian dwarfs essentially go in the heat every 28 days. So once a month, they're in heat uh, and susceptible to, to be bred. So we have to keep our goats separated. Unlike some of the larger uh, breeds of goats that only go in heat uh, roughly once a year, the Nigerian Doris, it's a once a month kind of ordeal. So uh, with that being said, you know, we have to keep our bucks and our nannies separate um, from each other. And then we bring them into this breeding pen here to, uh, so we can, um, in a sense, have uh, planned breeding. Uh, since all of our goats are registered, it's easier to have control over the registration of the babies um but by knowing what billy bred what doe uh we currently have three breeder bucks uh this fellow behind us back here not gnawing down stuff this red and white goat here that's our breeder uh buck gen the general um and he's also in here with queen fancy and cutie uh a couple of our does uh that they've had babies earlier this year, but now they're um, ready mm, to be bred. No, only one of them. Oh, yeah. Only one of them. Cutie had babies earlier this year. Yeah. Fancy is almost three, I want to say, and she hasn't taken from a breeding yet. So, yes. fingers crossed, we're hoping that she, she will. Um, Queen had babies, I think, last year. Yeah. Um, she's only freshened that one time. So we're hoping that this breeding will take and we'll have some babies on the ground come spring. Yes. So um, that's another thing for you guys to look out for. Uh, the, these, This breeding here will bring spring babies, uh, which it is November now. They've been here since the 1st of November. Um, and they will be in for roughly a month. Um, so I hope that we hit two heat cycles. Uh, so we'll keep them in over a little over a month together to hopefully hit two heat cycles um, per doe. So that increases the chance of actually having successful breeding take place. Uh, which we have seen some good signs, so hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, our old boy back here is getting the job done. And uh, we will have some babies in five months, the gestation period on a Niger, well actually it's about 145 days. 145 days okay so about five months give or take a few days um we should have babies so that puts us right around springtime 
for some new babies. That's one thing for you guys to look out for. Uh, also, um, so we would like to just uh, explain a little bit more on the process on the breeding aspect of the goats, but also what do we do after the, the does are bred and what steps do we take to ensure uh, healthy deliveries, what things we look for. Um, then we also go in and want to talk about some of the things that we do after the babies are on the ground, after they're born. How do we take care of the the kids, you know, that's um, our baby goats. Um, and how do we prepare them for their new homes. So y'all stay tuned um, and we'll elaborate a little. shelter that we have in our girls pen for them um, we just wanted to basically show you our newest additions these cute little guys that are out of our registered girl um, the buck fairy did not disappoint I guess we got all bucklings just about it uh, we did not get any keeper dolings unfortunately but at least they're cute, I guess. <laughs> yep. Which brings us to the point of, currently as we film in this video, these two guys are still available. Um, if you would like, if you should have any interest in them or any information wanted, you can just comment us or on our farm page at One Dream Farm for any additional information on these guys. Um, so They are on the bottle, <coughs> as you can see. And that leads us to the next point of, what we do after our goats are born, um, after they're bred, and uh, we keep a close eye on the moms uh, during the pregnancy. Um, we try to keep make sure we have them on proper feed, hay diet, minerals. Um, we do also have to, a month before they are due to kid, we do have to give them a CD and T shot. It's not uh, a necessity, but it's highly recommended. Um, if you would like more information on that, you can look it up. It's CD&T. You can get it at your local farm store. Um, order it online. Um, vets prescribe it. Um, so that way, we give it to them a month before they kid, and it also passes through as the first dose for the kids. Um, we try to assist all of our females, all of our does during the pregnancy as we set up baby monitors to try to monitor them the last few days. That's one of the reasons it's very important to have the breeding pen uh, set up so you can monitor when the doe went in with the buckling, the, I mean the buck, the time that she should uh, projectively uh, kid, like the gestation period. If you can have it down to um, at least a week before to a week after um, is a great you know time frame to look at as far as when to start monitoring the moms um, showing any signs of going into labor uh, and we'll explain more of that once we actually have some does getting closer to going into labor uh, after the breeding stuff and so y'all stay tuned on some of the future videos and we'll try to bring y'all along on maybe even some delivery of some of these little guys right here um, I do want to say that Nigerian dwarfs they're more likely to have multiples than just one. And that's why I like to be there. One reason I like to be there is in case something's turned wrong or anything like that. I just want to make sure everything's going smoothly. Yes. And with that being said, though, since they can have multiples and it's very common that they have multiples, that's one of the reasons we like to bottle feed. We take our babies straight from the mother, which if you can see in the corner that... Uh, head that just popped up is actually June is the mother to these two guys um, but we do take the babies they do not milk 
from the mom. They do not feed off the mom. One time, if we can be here to assist, and that's another reason we like to be there, is to take them. We go straight into milking out the colostrum, putting it in a bottle, and starting these guys on bottles as soon as we possibly can. Uh, that helps us monitor, monitor the intake that these guys get. And with having multiples, uh, like these are twins, but we have had sets of triplets, um, and it's not uncommon to have quads uh, or more. So um, it's a great way for us no. as the, the parents, more or less, of these guys to monitor the intake. Because having multiple babies can lead to runts or somebody not getting a sufficient amount of milk and stunting the growth or even losing yeah. babies due to not feeding enough. We had so, that problem. Yes, we have had we that problem in the past. So we decided to uh, not dam raise, as it's called, by raising from the mom. We decided not to dam raise if we could help it and try to bottle feed all the babies. It is a task. Um, and we can even do some more of the bottle feeding and uh, instructional videos and stuff like that of how we go about like the proper steps to get these guys from day one to the 10 week mark where they're starting to wean and ready for their new homes if you do want a bottle baby. Um, another thing that we do uh, for our, our kids when they're born is after we take them we also apply iodine to the umbilical cord um, within the first hour or two if possible. It is very important. It helps keep the umbilical cord in a sanitary manner. It helps uh, helps dry up efficiently and helps getting any kind of uh, basically infections or diseases getting in from the umbilical site. Um, and one more thing I want to touch on uh, while we have these guys out here is the fact that like most goats, now we do have some that are born that are polled which means without horns which one of our billies is naturally polled so he does throw naturally polled babies. In this case here, you cannot see it on the camera, but they are they're starting to get the little horn knots in, and which they are scheduled within the next week to go and be disbudded, which is essentially cutting, uh, burning off, and uh, stimulating the roots of the horns and keeping them from growing, so they can, well, in a sense, not have horns. We it, don't like horns. We don't like horns. It's safer for the goats in multiple ways. Um, if you have large hold fencing, the horns can get stuck in. They have goats will stick their heads through the, the holes in the fence. The horns can get stuck, and ultimately, you can cause your goats to die. Um, Unless you check on them really, really regularly. Yes, but even if just the mindset being, you may say, "Well, I go out there every day, all day with my goats." Well, you have to sleep at some point in time. And honestly, goats will eat all night long. So if they have access to something green on the other side of that fence that they might like, and they can get their heads through it, during the night is a prime time for a goat to get hung up. If you have a bad storm come in, like which we did unexpectedly, you know, and you have a goat hung up in a fence, there's a good chance you could possibly lose that animal. And so that's one of the reasons we just do not like horns. Another reason being, uh, as everybody knows, goats, they headbutt. And, uh, which is fine. The goats are, uh, naturally, you know, I guess designed, in, in a sense, to say, to where they can take the headbutt with horns, without horns, it's fine. But, I have had goats headbutt through fences. When you have two bucks, um, if you have more than one buck on your property, and they're fighting to get to uh, dozing heat, they will destroy fences and them horns help tremendously in destroying fences to get to where they want to go plus we have kids yes. lots of them and they're um, all they're a really big part of taking care of the animals yeah, exactly and raising the animals so for us it was just safer not to have horns even though ethical. even though the nigerian dwarf goats are excellent temperament like i love them to death they're a little bit hyper I love to jump around and play, but 
I don't want to take that chance around my kids. Yeah. But see, they're cuddly yes. and friendly, and, and they're like dogs after you bottle feed them. This is the purpose of bottle feeding. Honestly, all of our goats, with the exception of two that we have on the farm right now, are were raised, started, and raised on bottles. And you can tell a tremendous difference. But it's also for the fact that if you do have really any goats on your property, with or without horns, and you have small kids, uh, ball feeding is also a prime way to um, to help with that safety because the temperaments are way different. We, our biggest male, which is not currently on the property right now, he's out visiting, uh, visiting some uh, new ladies. Uh, that's another form of income for us. Uh, is studding out bucks. So that's another thing that, you know, if you're going to keep a buck on your property, that's one thing to consider. Uh, a source of income more than um, uh, selling babies is also studding out your males. Um, we have three, as we said, that are, we have three hundred indoors to goats just hit our camera. So bear with us. But we do yeah. have three. Mm. And she hit it on the way out too. So leave it to be ya. Yeah. So we um have three and a jury and dwarf bucks, as we said previously in this video, uh, that we breed. And um, we do have a Nubian male which we're going to be doing some crosses with uh, feature and we'll bring y'all along on that video, um, that journey too, when we get into some of the larger dairy breeds. Yeah, also, we're not crossing the Nubian with our, no, not with with our Nigerian Nigerians. Horse. Don't think that. No, no, I would never no. We're not going that, that route. Especially no. with him being a buck. Yes. Um, if we had Nubian does that we plan on getting a couple in the future, we will be taking, possibly taking our Nigerian dwarf bucks and bring them to new Nubian does to make many uh, Nubians. Nubians. But as of right now, he's he's still a young fella, even though he looks like a small horse. <laughs> he's not interested. He's not interested in ladies. So right now, he doesn't need his own ladies quite yet. So that's still going to be a journey that we're going to take y'all along with us on when we start expanding from just the Nigerian dwarf goats to some of the larger breeds and explain why we would like to go into a few larger breed goats. We're not getting many, and we're sticking with the Ni uh, Nigerians. Uh, they'll be a part of this homestead. As forever. long as there's a homestead, we'll so, probably have Nigerians. Yes, just, uh, we love them. Yeah, they're awesome. The great pets um, for their size. They have awesome milk production, um, and for small homestead, it's also great because if you don't have a lot of land, Nigerian dwarfs don't acquire a lot of land as um, some of the larger breeds do. Yeah, they don't really require smaller. it. They eat a lot less. Yes. Or that's what I hear anyways. Mine eat like horses. Yeah. Ours do eat like horses. They go through hay. Bro but eat hay and we um whew. that's one reason we love the Nigerian doors. Um, because we can have more. Right now I think we're at the upscale about 17 goats on the uh, homestead right now. Somewhere around there. Mm. Are we downsized? We might downsize. I can't really remember. It's, we have so many babies coming and going, and we. I don't think it's 17. Though. It might not be 17, but we do have a few, and it is actually really manageable on a smaller piece of land um, versus some of the larger breeds of goats. What are you doing, Izzy? And this is another one of our dolings that is growing up that we are. Um, have obtained this year since we've been on the new property. This is Esmeralda. She will be going in the breeding pen uh, probably around the first of the year. Mm, it'll be after February. Oh, after, well, still the first part of the year after February, but she will be one of the last ones that we will breed this year. Um, she's still too small right now. Yeah, she's still young, a little small. We try to breed our goats, our does. At, at least a year old. We like we like for them to get to at least a year old before we breed them. And then sometimes we let them go further than that. Yes. Just depends on how big they are. She's a little smaller stature, so she may end up being even later than that. I'm not sure yet. I just got to see how she matures. So, so some more, um, you know, I guess you could say 
beneficial things to having goats on the homestead. Um, of course, we've covered how they can be a great source of income. Nigerian dwarf goats are very high in demand. Yeah, they're very uh, popular. Very popular, especially amongst the homesteaders, because of the size. The they're easy, you know, easy maintenance for the most part. I mean, goats in general need the same maintenance. Uh, it's just uh, as far as the wormers and stuff, you got to make sure you keep very her. important. Yeah, very important. We actually run kind of drier paddocks than some people. I don't necessarily would say I prefer pasture raising over dry paddocks, which is basically a dirt paddock, because parasites can be a lot worse growing from the ground that they eat from. So uh, it is more costly to do it that way, though. Honestly, um, with having a drier paddock, you have to uh, basically supplement with more hay. Yeah, and we, um, that we buy a lot of hay. So that does um, that is one thing to take into consideration. If you're thinking about getting into goats um, of any sort, you can raise any goats on like a dryer paddock, um, which uh, is kind of more susceptible, uh, a little Bia. more easier. It's for, always you. Oh, goat. It's me. For. Uh, For parasites, I mean, it helps you out a lot with parasites. Uh, it's one of the things to really keep, keep in uh, mind. But if it's financial thing is that you just don't want to buy a lot of hay, then you have access to greener uh, pastures or even wooded lots. I mean, that's also fine too for goats. Goats are uh, goats are great in any kind of really any kind of environment you can pretty much put them in. Uh, main thing about goats, since we are sitting in the shelter. Uh, they just need to be dry, uh, yeah. dry and out of the weather. Uh, goats pretty hardy for the most part. As long as you can keep a good hand uh, handle on um, the parasites, goats are pretty hardy. They eat a lot. There are some, you know, uh, plants out there that they can have, uh, like azaleas, black walnuts, wild cherry. Um, very easy to find online of uh, looking into Here's those kind of things of what they can't have that you need to rid your pasture of before getting the goats because and the misconception that goats will eat anything is it's not true goats are actually really picky eaters uh they will chew on almost anything but they don't eat everything not everything you want them to eat exactly so um with that being said since we're on the, the breeding aspect of things too, another thing to keep in mind is goats and milk. Uh, once the does have kitted and we are milking goats, their feed content needs to be at least a 16% protein level uh, for them to uh, produce enough milk uh, efficiently, but also have, uh, sustain their own, uh, you know, more or less their own bodies. Um, so that way they can well, remain healthy and um, still produce plenty of milk and milking won't be an issue. Uh, you can keep goats in milk for a year at a time. Yeah. Um, if they're maintained properly with uh, proper minerals and, and uh, proper feed, uh, they can stay in milk and it won't uh, take away from the mamas whatsoever. So uh, right now all of our does with the exception of June, which is the last one to kid for these new babies, um, we're letting them dry up and getting them ready to go back into the breeding pens. Um, we only breed once a year. Yeah, we only breed once a year. Not saying that you can't breed more than that, but we only breed once a year. And talking about milk, um, there's another income. A lot of people want it for pets. Like if they're bottle raising dogs or have goats themselves or anything like that, you can make a whole bunch of stuff from the milk. You can make soaps, lotions, um, caramel, cheese. cheese. What am I forgetting? All kinds of stuff that you can make from milk that you can Yogurts. turn around. I mean, and sell. pretty much any kind of dairy product that you can buy in the Scarlet. store, uh, butter. Um, yogurts, cheese, all kinds of dairy products, and also there's, but like goat milk soaps is really big, it's really popular nowadays. Um, 
really good for your skin. Really good for your skin. Especially if you have eczema uh, or if you have eczema like or that. like that. Even drinking goat milk um, can even be more beneficial than cow's milk. Uh, it actually is more um, nutritional for you than cow's milk. Pasteurized or non-pasteurized, it's actually uh, really good for you. And it can also, it has a lower lactose count in it. It's not lactose free, but it's lower lactose than cow milk. So it's actually, if you're lactose intolerant, drinking goat's milk could possibly be something for you to try and it might actually help with that upset stomach every time you try to intake dairy products. That's another thing to keep in mind. Um, but, I mean, other than that, I think we about covered a lot to say what we had to say about our goats uh, in this video and just wanted to take y'all along on a short semi-informational video on our goats, how we raise them, how we breed them, and how we prepare the babies to go to their new homes. Um, Hello, Jeannie. So, like we said, with that being said, if y'all haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button to our channel. Click the notification bell so you get all the new videos that we post, which we do plan on coming to y'all with more videos is just with the hurricane and all the disasters and stuff we had going on. Uh, it was just put us a little bit behind on our video making. So we're hoping to come forth with some more videos. Hopefully as right now, at least once a week with some new videos. So y'all stay tuned for those. So make sure you click that notification bell, the subscribe button. And if you haven't already done so, please check out our farm page on Facebook, One Dream Farm. And any of our products that we make that any of our animals um, like these little fellas here that we had in this video are listed on there for sale uh, any of like I said any of our products that we produce here at the homestead or if y'all just like to learn more about us figure things uh, maybe learn some new things about the homesteading life uh, canning and you know, that stuff you know feel free to shout out to us uh, ask questions and you know we'll do our best to answer and take y'all along in any journey that we could possibly do i will be doing more about the goats especially when it comes to baby watch and all that um i'll update if i find out any of them are pregnant we did see queen stand for the general so hopefully but Fingers when i crossed. know for sure i will update and let everybody know um we're really excited about these breedings Yes. Very, possibilities. Very much so excited about what's to come uh, from these breedings and um, just what the future has in store for us and our homestead. So we, like I always say, I want to bring y'all along on our journey on how we're going to rebuild our homestead in this new, you know, this new piece of land that we've acquired. So, you know, with that being said, if you don't have nothing else to add, I have nothing else to add. God bless. Y'all stay safe.